Welcome in this video where we are going to focus on NERF, Neural Valiance Field. Uh, and we are going to implement this paper that was a following paper on the NERF paper uh, on the study in more details the, uh, the positional encoding, why it's so important with NERF. And they also propose another encoding that is called uh, Gaussian encoding. So it is, uh, they compare the different mappings. So mapping the input dimension, the position, for example, to higher dimensional space. Um, in the North paper, they use positional encoding, and in this paper, they use Gaussian encoding. So we will, uh, it's useful for 2D regression on images, but also, for example, inverse rendering. Uh, so uh, basically what North is doing, and this is what we'll focus on in this video. Uh, these are the results we'll get by the end of this video. Uh, if you've seen my previous videos, uh, you notice that maybe the performances of these uh, novel views are a bit worse than the ones we've uh, we've, we've used uh, we've produced uh, before. It's because the uh, the setup of the paper is a bit different than one from NERF. For example, the uh, the the neural network only takes the uh, the position as input and do not uh, take into account the view dependence uh, uh, from the rendering equation. So yeah, okay. The, but uh, overall, the performance of this paper uh, for inverse rendering are a bit worse than vanilla NERF. Uh, but anyway, let's move on to the implementation. And of course, it could be improved by, for example, taking the the view, uh, the direction dependent uh, effects. Okay, so, okay, let me uh, delete this. Uh, okay, so let's move on to uh, implementing the paper. We'll use PyTorch. Uh, and now I can uh, put back this, uh, this code with the North model. So uh, as there is no more positional encoding, uh, we'll use uh, the Gaussian, uh, there is no more positional encoding. So with, uh, we no longer need those arguments in the constructor, but instead we take the number of features uh, that will be useful for the uh, Gaussian encoding. If you've read the paper, you already know what it means. And otherwise, uh, we will uh, use them in a bit. So uh, you will soon understand what it means. So this time the neural network, so as, as we've said, uh, there is no view dependence. And it's a very tiny neural network only four layers, uh, five layers, uh, while the NERF uh, model is a bit more uh, involved and also have uh, skip connections. So, okay, in that case, very simple neural network that will predict the color on a density. Uh, again, no view dependence effect, so that's why the result are a bit worse than usual. Okay, uh, creating our activation functions, and we will draw randomly a vector B. Um, so we draw it from a random normal Gaussian distribution, uh, and we, uh, we scale the, um, the standard deviation so we use the scale uh, for the uh, for the distribution. That is a hyperparameter. Uh, we could have used this uh, this value six or overall this whole multiplication thirty six. We could have added in the hyperparameters. Okay, great. So now we can move on to our positional encoding. Maybe I should not have called that positional encoding, but Gaussian encoding. Uh, and it's very simple to implement. You just take the cosine of x. Multiplied matrix, um, you do the matrix multiplication of x with the uh, matrix B that we've uh, drawn normally, and you do the same uh, but with the sign. Uh, so very simple, you can implement it in one line of code, um, and yeah, and therefore you have this hyperparameter number of features. Okay, great. Uh, now we can move on, move on to the forward pass a bit, uh, very short because there is no more skip connection, there is no uh, direction uh, view um, view dependence. So just onboarding the uh, the input to higher dimensional space and then feeding that to the neural network. And then we can uh, use the activation function and uh, return the color on the, uh, on the density. Now we can move on to rendering. So uh, this function compute accumulated transmittance that will compute the, uh, the transmittance uh, accumulated by each ray. I'm going very fast uh, on those equations because first we've already implemented, implemented uh, NERF in previous videos, and also I have a, a full course detailing uh, all the equations. Uh, it's a course that is more than uh, 10 hours, we'll also to, uh, discuss about rendering. So if you are interested, just read the comments for a link to the course. Okay, so now moving on to rendering. So the first thing to do is to sample uh, points along the way. So first we sample some t-values. So the t-value will uh, tell us uh, uh, where the ray is at time t. So we sample a few t-values randomly. Uh, between Hn and Hf, which are the bones of our integral. Uh, we also compute delta, which is the, uh, the di distance between uh, two successive uh, t-values. So basically, when we do the integration, this is the width of each bin. And to do the uh, integral, we just need to compute, uh, to multiply the width with the height of each bin to sum that. And this gives us uh, an approximation of our integral. 
So when we have sample t, we can compute the position of the ray at those time t. So just doing the ray origin plus t times d, uh, where d is the direction of the rays. So this line 50. And then we can feed those points x to the north model uh, and also compute the color on the sigma at those points x. Again, the north model is not taking the direction as input. Uh, the result should be better by uh, taking the direction as input. Now we can, uh, now that we have the sigma on the color, uh, we can just uh, move on to computing the, uh, the color of the ray using the volumetric uh, integral uh, and approximating with the sum uh, as described in the paper. And we also use a, a white background regularization because uh, this code is made for synthetic data with white background. If you don't have white background, you can just remove those two terms uh, that are just uh, there for the white background uh, that often happens with the synthetic data. Okay, now we can move on to training. Uh, this is just supervised learning because for each ray we know its target value. The uh, North model which will generate a new value, make, make a new prediction, and we just need to draw a regression between the predicted value and the target value using the MSC uh, to loss. So okay, we uh, create a training loss to logging, uh, for logging the, the loss over training. We iterate over the number of epochs, and then uh, we uh, iterate um, over each, uh, each batch. Uh, doing this uh, iter next of iter is pretty slow if you just study that. I think in that case with respect to the whole order operation, it's not uh, an issue, but uh, maybe in, uh, I will maybe optimize the code at some point. Uh, there are better ways to do that, but still that's uh, that's okay. So okay, for, for, from the batch, we retrieve the origin, the direction of the ground true pixel values um, that, were, that were encoded in our data set. And then we can just uh, make a prediction with the neural network for the array and then uh, take the uh, MSE between the predicted value and the ground true uh, value. And then we can do a gradient step. Uh, yeah. And return. Yeah, okay. Before returning the training loss, uh, every, for example, 5,000 epochs, uh, we can do some testing. So, testing, um, so generating novel views uh, on the testing data set. That can be pretty slow. With a vanilla nerf, uh, generating novel views is slow. We've seen in uh, older videos how to improve that. Uh, so maybe what you can do here, instead of testing the whole testing data set, is just testing uh, maybe two or five uh, images drawn randomly uh, that will uh, improve your uh, training time. Okay, and now that we have returned the training loss and uh, creating, uh, created the train function, we can put all the pieces together in our main uh, function. Okay, I forgot first we need to, uh, to implement this testing function to generate novel views that was called on line uh, 84. So first for the given image uh, ID, so let's say we want to do testing on the image uh, image 10, for example, we need to retrieve the uh, rays related to that image from the data set. So this is what line 92 and 93 are doing. And then we can move on to uh, generating the image so what we do, uh, we do not feed all the rays related to that image uh, at the same time because we will have a, a memory issue uh, with our uh, on our GPU unless we have a very uh, great GPU with uh, maybe uh, 80 gigabytes of uh, VRAM. So first, what we do, we chunks the origin on the directions uh, to do only uh, to do some batching. So we will uh, generate the image, but per but uh, batch per batch. Um, so yeah, this is what we're doing. We're chunking the origin on the direction. We generated the, uh, the pixel values for those chunks and then uh, concatenating, uh, putting them all together on line 103 and then uh, plotting the results. Okay, and now we can finally uh, put all the pieces together. So we, are, we have a device queued down. We'll train on the GPU. We can load our data set, the training on the testing data set. We create our model, the North model, uh, an optimizer. And then finally, we can uh, pl uh, plug that in the training loop. Uh, before, we can also create a data loader from the training data set. Uh, but yeah, once everything is ready, we plug that in the training function and we get as output a trained nerf model. So I really like you. Uh, I really hope you liked this video. If you, uh, if you did, please leave a thumbs up uh, and subscribe for more videos like that. Uh, and again, I have a course about nerf if you're interested. Uh, the link is in the comments.